Okay. Uh, for me, what I like to do is a diaphragm vibrato. So, the vibra vibrato comes from the diaphragm. The variation that you get is not so much a change in pitch, but rather a change in the in intensity of the note. So. is coming from here. In most cases, in fact, a lot of composers don't even um, specify vibrato. But if they do, it's often the player's decision whether to use a diaphragm vibrato or a lip vibrato, which would be a very different sound from the diaphragm vibrato because yeah. here the, the change is in the pitch, the pitch of the note rather than the intensity I of the see. note. So the, but both of these I would still consider as a very standard uh, methods of vibratos. Sometimes you run into um, players who strongly prefer one method over the other. Personally I don't, I don't think that's an issue because it is really all down to how, how, the, how the player interprets a vibrato, I think. Mm. So beyond a diaphragm and a lip vibrato, there are actually other, um, maybe you could say, more, more interesting ways of vibrato. Um, one good one that I would like to introduce would be a vibrato with the right hand. And uh, uh, again, with varying intensity. So. <laughs> So what were you actually doing with your... So what I was doing in here was basically doing this. Okay. So when, when we use the right hand, we use the right hand all the time to, to adjust intonation, to stop, uh, stop notes, uh, that sort of thing. What I was doing is going from... I was basically adjusting the intonation very quickly Okay. using that. I was not going to uh, use a stop position. Actually, you can. But the effect is, again, very different, much more dramatic. Very, very cool. Very, very dramatic uh, yeah. difference. This, uh, not so easy to do, especially if the player is uh, standing up. Because, uh, as you can see, I really needed the bell on, on my thigh yeah. to do that. Okay. Yeah. As well, the shake vibrato, literally, I just play a note and shake the horn. Again, a very dramatic effect. Um, cool. <laughs> not 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 a so-called beautiful effect, but a, definitely a very interesting effect, I think. Okay. Stopped and horn actually uh, came about in the days of the natural horn, because earlier we were going. <laughs> And soon, sooner or later, um, they realized that you could get pitches outside of this by adjusting your hand, so you could get... I'm going to try that again. Um, yeah, but basically they, they do that to change the pitch. Yes. Yeah. So... Nearly a chromatic scale by uh, yeah. by doing that, and th that's how uh, stopped horn came about. Today, uh, it is used as a, a color variety. So, a, a stop passage would be. It's a very, it is an interesting tone color. It has been very widely used. The one thing actually that I like to um, bring up when, talk, when talking about stop horn is the issue of range because be below a certain range it gets very difficult to hand stop. So. And that for me would be the limit. Any lower than that gets very difficult to stop. Over 
here there's absolutely no center. Yeah. So below that range, that would be um, C4, you would not expect a hand stop. However, some composers have written for stop horn in that low range, and that's the reason the uh, stop mute was invented. It was invented to allow stop notes down low. So now, again, So basically you can do all I the can notes. Stop all the way down. I see. But you need time to let the players That's do the thing. insert you need them. time for, for the player to pick up the mute and put it in. I see. Another thing um, that's interesting to take note of is that even though the stop mute was invented to uh, replicate hand stopping, the fact is they actually don't sound very similar. Now, nowadays, um, in fact, all the time composers simply uh, indicate stopped. Whether it is hand stopped or with a stop mute is usually up to the performer. I think it would be actually quite interesting for composers who, are, who, have, who really desire a specific tone colour to specify whether they want a stop mute or hand stop because actually they, I don't think they sound very similar at all. So yeah. With the stop mute and very different, yeah. Very, very different. And <laughs> it, it was designed to imitate hand stopping, so maybe a design issue or whatever, but it is very different. And I think... So, to if we want the... I know we put a plus sign, right? Yes. But if we want the metal mute, we just write. We just make sure we write metal mute or something. Uh, I, w I would prefer the term stop mute rather than metal mute because How do we distinguish many, uh, other things? the hand stop and with, that? Uh, with a plus sign, again, it's completely up to the player. So the player will decide in this passage if he's going to hand stop or use a stop mute. Um, if you want to specify, then uh, you can simply write hand stopped or stop mute, which, whichever you want. So stop mute would be that, right? This would okay. be called a stop mute. Um, three quarter stop horn. It's also been called half stop or echo horn. Um, I prefer the name three quarter stop horn because it's more technically accurate. And what we do is we close the hand enough to lower the note by one semitone. The the pitch written on the score with uh, with three quarter stop horn would be the resulting pitch, which means that it's the opposite of stop horn. With stop horn I have to finger one semitone lower. With echo horn I finger one semitone higher. So oh, that's interesting, okay. This is the open horn. And the E. So that would be E4, three quarters stop. quality is different between the the tone quality is different between half and three quarter no? absolutely absolutely okay with, uh, with three quarter one of the reasons why it's also called echo horn is because it does sound like like an echo so yeah as opposed to stop horn which will be Metallic. There's yes. this metallic bus. Stop. Stop horn is always very metallic. Whether you use hand stop or stop mute. So yeah. In fact, uh, I was gonna ask you. Sure. Stop mute. Go ahead. It's the most most metallic of the lot. So I was gonna ask you in terms of note uh writing because of this pitch like I, sometimes it's semitone up sometimes it's semitone down do we just write the do we just write just what we want just what we write want to, the pitch you want to hear 
Absolutely. And then the French horn, the, the player, player will, will, will decide, will, will, will handle the transposition. Okay. I, I, I know uh, you mentioned metal mute, and I know some composers have used that, and performers have understood it, but for me, I prefer to reserve the term metal mute for this thing. This is basically a straight mute. So when composers call, f call for muted parts, when they just write mute, it means by default a straight mute. And straight mutes are made both in wood as well as in metal. Now the both are very widely, very, very commonly available, but for whatever reason, most players prefer a wooden mute. There seems to be uh, the general idea that a metal mute has a so-called inferior tone quality to a wooden mute. <laughs> but they are both very widely available, and for me, if you use the term metal mute, I would think of this before I think of think of a stop mute. Do so most French horn players have this collection of mutes? Like, do you they? You would definitely expect a player to have at least one uh, straight mute and at least one stop mute. Okay. When it comes to metal mutes, although they are very widely available, I would not say most horn players have a okay. metal mute simply because they're just so very unpopular. Okay, especially I see. within the orchestral sound. Okay, so let's so listen to the sound. Like yes, first with the regular wooden straight mute. <laughs> It's like a Again. totally different, yeah. Again, it's a totally different, different instrument, yeah. And yet they are both marketed as straight mute. So when you indicate straight mute, it could be any of these. Well, ninety percent of the time it'll be this because okay. most players don't like. It. This is a lontano mute, and like the name, like the name suggests, it's simply meant to make the horn sound like it was off stage. So very quiet. <laughs> There's actually not that much difference in uh, in tone color. Most of the difference is in projection. So versus the regular open horn. So it's basically the same tone quality, but same tone quality. It sounds very distant. Sounds quite distant. Yes. So that's why it's called a lontano mute. A cup mute for a French horn. This is actually again again not very common at all, you would, not, you would not expect uh, players to own one, but I think more common than the Lontano mute. I do not have a cut mute to, to, to demonstrate, but it functions more or less in the same way as a cut mute for a trumpet or trombone would, would function. It makes the tone very um, uh, gloppy, if you like. Yeah. I don't think that's a word, but <laughs> okay. the idea about muting basically is to insert things into the bell to change the tone color. So with with a bit of imagination you could use just about any sort of object you like. Experiment around, find all sorts of things. Some some things that I've found quite useful would be things like a piece of cloth. <laughs> And of course, you can always experiment with holding it in varying degrees of insertion, that sort of thing. Quite a similar effect, yeah. actually. Was that like fully inserted? No, that was about halfway. We okay. can try. We can try fully. As I mean, as, as in like covering the oh, entire. Covering? No. If I, if I covered the entire thing, it would be very difficult to play. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't I see. really... So you must really make sure you... I, I do still need a little bit of space. I see, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. We can put it... Let's just try it. All I think it's got to do with the metal vibration, right? Yes. The cloth. Yes, there's something about it dampening the vibrations, making it sound very muffled. Uh, glass bottles have actually been asked for before. 
uh, as a as a score. Yes, uh, Ligeti has written for actually glass vase. He he called it, which I would interpret as a bottle. I I don't have a bottle. I've got a flask because I think it's just a much nicer shape to hold in the bill. So. <laughs> is a big issue with this, but you have to experiment with varying varying degrees of insertion. I'm going to try a little bit more open. Wow. So really, okay. really, this I is uh, with with objects such as a cloth or a glass bottle. You. I think it would be fair not to expect any degree of um, accuracy intonation. in terms of yeah. intonation or pitch. It's very much a tone color effect. I think yes. he was trying to get a echo, like trying to get a re, I don't the, know, the, like the sort of resonance reverb, into the yeah, sort of effect. In, back into the instrument or something like. I think he was trying to get that. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because the sound waves will go back. They, to they sort of just get reflected rather than passing yeah. through. Yes. Closing and opening, uh, like tr three quarter stop and open, three quarter stop and open, or or half. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something. Some, like some people call it laughing. Maybe it's wailing. 